Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's yet another Sunday morning that the Lord has given us opportunity to hear his voice and his word. I'm excited and privileged to have this opportunity to speak into our lives by the grace of God. I want us to pray and then we'll be blessed. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we honor you this morning. Thank you for the privilege to be called your children. And I thank you this morning for this opportunity that you have given to us to receive your word and enjoy your blessing. And so we open up our hearts to you that you will minister to us greatly. Have your way and be exalted in our midst for the glory of your name. Thank you for everybody who shall come across this message. May their lives be transformed. May their life be lifted. May you bless them, O oh God, more than they can ever imagine in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning and what a privilege to have another opportunity to hear the word of God. Every morning I'm excited with this great opportunity. And so this morning I'd like to speak about a subject. There is a friend. There is a friend. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I read the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse number 24. The book of Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse number 24. Bible tells us one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Oh, hallelujah. One who has unreliable friends comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, this morning, the subject of my message is there is a friend. Now, I want you to take a walk through your life and ask yourself fundamental questions. What kind of friends do you have? What kind of friends do you have? Because friends determine how far you can go in many dimensions or spheres of life. Now, if people care about you, they speak about, if people care about you and they know God, they will certainly speak to you in the dimension that they want you also to know this God. And that is why on the basis of this kind of situation, we keep speaking to us every day because we are determined to ensure that people know God. Now, in the context of the reality of God, the people you fellowship with, the people you interact with would speak to you about what they know. Now, as a matter of fact, you cannot share what you do not have. You cannot tell people to go to the gym and you are unfit yourself. It will not make sense. So, the Bible tells us one who has unreliable friends soon will come to ruin. What this means is that your friends determine how far you can go in the right direction or in the wrong direction. Over the years, I've realized that friends are those individuals who are willing to stand with you no matter what. They are willing to challenge you. They are willing to make you progress. They will come to you at your doorstep and tell you what it is you're doing that is not correct with a desire that you will change. Now, you are in trouble if you've got friends who don't tell you about things you're doing wrong. They see the wrong you're doing and they don't talk anything. They're not there to assist you get better. Those are not the kind of friends you need. The Bible tells us one who has unreliable friends will soon come to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks more than a brother. Now, many times people do crazy things. They do wrong things in life. And now let me tell you, at the moment of the greatest level of, of, of being, you know, having done wrong things, if that level or at that point nobody comes to you, there are many people who would get lost and get lost completely. And so I've changed my perspective these days that, no matter how wrong people have done, it's imperative upon us to, yes, highlight the mistake that they have done, and highlight the wrong thing they have done, but show them the way of recovery. You cannot wash a child and throw away the child with the water that you used to wash them with. It's not possible. And I remember many years in, the, in my, you know, labor, labor, labor relations time, labor movement time, when I was one of the leaders in the union. I remember one time there was a guy who was, a, who was about to be sacked. 
And so I got to wind of this matter and it was actually his file for being sacked had been called up by the top level management. And I remember pleading with the regional person of HR responsibility to give this guy an opportunity. And I, I, I remember the, 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 the lady, the good lady told me, you, you can only save this guy by speaking to the boss, the, 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 the final guy. And so I wrote up an email. I couldn't get this guy on phone. And so I wrote an email and said, sir, I think you need to give the guy a chance because you cannot wash a child and throw the child away with the water. What happens is that when you wash your child, you throw away the water and you put the child in a towel because they are now clean. And the guy gave us an opportunity and said, wrote back and said, we give this guy one final opportunity. And if they will not change, then we'll have to sack them. Now, I want to tell you one thing. If you're a union leader listening to me this morning, wherever you are, in the country, in the nation, in the, in, in the industry or not, I want to tell you that some wars are not won by your intellectual power or your knowledge of law or your arguments. No, sometimes you win your war because you're willing to go down and plead your case. That's how some things are won. So, in, to cut the long story short, this man, we, we, we invited him with his wife to the office, spoke to him, told him he had only one more opportunity to change his perspective. And we know where the problem was coming from. Eventually, this guy worked himself until retirement and we give God glory. We saved a soul from being sucked. Now, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I want you to know in the name of Jesus Christ, when nobody is critiquing your life, when nobody is showing you that you're on the wrong, when nobody among your friendships is not speaking to you candidly about your life, then you have the wrong friendships. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, he who has unreliable friend, friends will soon come to ruin. When people see you doing the wrong thing and they speak nothing about it, when people see you uh, doing crazy things and they are quiet, and you think you're on the right side, let me tell you, you are on your path to ruin. This morning, I tell you, there is a friend. There is a friend. Now, in your networks, find people or individuals who are willing to speak to you the truth, who are willing to confront you, who are willing to show you on the wrong path, who are willing to tell you, do this, push yourself stronger. There is an investment here, invest in it. There is a path here, follow this path. There is something here we can invest and get things. Go there. These are individuals who can change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I came to speak to you there for this morning to let you know that God has a way of helping us to be the individual he created us to be. And I'm speaking specifically today concerning your network of friends. I can tell you many things I've done in this life. I have really relied on friends that encouraged me, pushed me, you know, motivated me, encouraged me to make certain decisions in my life. It was about the friendship circles that I enjoy in this generation. So I'm here to speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ for you to know that you need to have the right friendships. The Bible tells us one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, I, I just read something this morning on social media where a man they call the sage was saying, if you see people you have not disagreed with are starting to show attitude against you, it means your enemy has reached them. <laughs> and I think this is true. When you see people you have not had an altercation with, people you have never disagreed, people you have never had a a confrontation with, when you see them displaying an attitude against you, just know, that your enemies have reached out to them. Now, real friends stand with us. Real friends stand with you. No matter the situation, they will not entertain the wrong thing you're doing, but they will stand with you to make sure you recover from the mistakes you have done. Those are the friends I need. Those are the friends I look for. Those are the friends I want. Those are the people I want into my life. That even though I found myself in trouble, they will not abandon me. But they will neither will they agree with the wrong thing that I've done. They will come and rebuke me and correct me and hold my hand and return me to the path without necessarily throwing me away. Those are the friends that I need. And let me tell you, you are privileged if you have these kind of friends that will tell you the truth no matter what. They will not run away from you. They will not disappear. 
They will not bash you, but they will hold you and tell you the right way you need to follow. Praise the name of the Lord. And so as I speak to you this morning, as I encourage myself in the Lord this morning, I want to let you know in the name of Jesus Christ, there is a friend. So what kind of friends do you have? What kind of friends do you have? What kind of friends do you have? Are they those that just see you get into trouble and they keep quiet? Are they those that just assume? Are they even those that lead you into doing wrong things? Or are they that will correct you? They will be candid. They will criticize you. They will speak into your face and tell you, brother, sister, my friend, my colleague, this is wrong. You ought to do it better. You ought to do it better. They will stand with you. They will stand with you. They will walk with you. They will, they will be with you. They will, they will, they will take, uh, they will take you for who you are, but still correct you and tell you you should have done better. You should have done better than you have done right now. This is the kind of friend that I require. This is the kind of friend that I need. Because if you do not have reliable friends, then you can ultimately go to ruin. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to evaluate your friendships, therefore, and begin to determine what you need and get out and remove excess baggage. There are people who are in your life and they are excess baggage. you got to deal with excess baggage so you can focus and you can do that which God wants you to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you're blessed. I hope you've understood the concept of there is a friend. Don't waste time on busybodies. You see, I just heard somebody in politics say yesterday that the price of fertilizer in Kenya has been reduced. And I want to tell you one thing. You know, a 90 kilogram fertilizer bag has a very small percentage of fertilizer in it. The actual thing that the plants require. You'll see 0.01 potassium nitrate or something like that. So if the fertilizer content is less than, actually less than 1%, what is the other component of the 90 kilogram bag? Those who have done agricultural studies, you would know that is called filler material. Filler material. It's just added into the fertilizer to make it sellable, to make it in a way it can be carried, but the true content of what the plant requires is a very small concentration of the entire 90 kilogram bag. In this world, in your friendships, are those friends in the component that adds value to your life or are they filler material? I want to be the component that will influence people's lives positively in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you this morning that you will help us to be friends who will add value in people's lives. I dedicate everything in your hands and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you touch us in a new way for the glory and honor of your name. I want to bless you and to thank you this morning in Jesus' name. For there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sacco coming to you live on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On the 9th of April 2022, we'll be back with the Rekabite moment between 8 and 9 p.m. Look out for the banner. It's an event or an opportunity where we raise men and women of principle. So 9th of April, 8 to 9 p.m., both on this platform and Zoom, and it will be advertised. Please make sure you join. We're inviting a man of God who God has lifted from scratch to be an individual who is dealing with nations. I want to welcome and prepare you for this event. 9th of April, let it be on your calendar and make sure you follow up on this program, 9th of April, 8 to 9 p.m. You're going to be blessed on the Rechabite moments in the name of Jesus. Shalom. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. And I believe that the Lord continues to bless our lives. Thank you and God bless you.